Master, uh, a full set of songs, and so we're pretty excited about that. Patty's plugging us into YouTube, and I just realized that I, I sang rather boldly during that, and I have heard myself, so I apologize. I apologize. I heard myself. I do know. Okay. So, uh, good morning, all of you out there watching in YouTube land. Uh, we're thankful that you've joined us. Uh, we've got a full slate of services uh, during this Holy Week, and we hope that you can uh, join us via uh, Facebook and YouTube for those services as well. Uh, at this time, we will, you know, our offering, we just have it at the door now. We don't pass the plate, but that doesn't mean that we can't give thanks to the Lord for giving us the ability, the desire even, to, to give back. Almighty God, we love you. We, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Uh, this is our praise to, uh, along the road for Jesus to ride on. We throw down our wealth and realize that, that it means nothing to us and that you mean everything. This is our prayer, dear Lord. Amen. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't even have the words up there. I've been messing these slides up all day long. Hey, um, the next rest area is just 40 years. 40 years. That's going to be a long 40 years, too. He wants a lifetime guarantee. The old coot is 102. Give it to him. We'll still come out ahead. Methuselah had the last laugh. I don't remember exactly how long Methuselah lived. I'm thinking it was in the neighborhood of 800 years, right? 30 shekels. It's like brand new. Just had a policeman knock on my door saying that he was looking for a man with one eye. I told him to use both as he'd probably find him a lot quicker. Yeah, you know, a lot of policemen, whenever they're... Uh, 
Sometimes you can joke with them, and sometimes it's not a good time. You never know. I'm at that delusional age where I think everyone my age looks way older than I do. I'm not the only one. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I remind myself that you can't always trust Google Maps. And when you realize summer is coming and your winter body has gotten out of control, the winter body. <laughs> yeah, you've got a palm branch too. Every day, God thinks of you. Every hour, God looks, out, looks after you. Every minute, God cares for you because every second, He loves you. God loves you. And that is always my message every Sunday, that God loves you. And I love you, and we love you, and we're glad you're here. You know that? We're glad you're here. Hey. Now, I'm guessing if you go to maybe uh, preschool and kindergarten, first grade, right? Do they have a deal still? Do they still do the student of the week, sometimes student of the month? They might even do student of the day. Nancy, can you tell us? That's still a thing, right? Have you ever been that person? Wouldn't that, isn't that awesome? Right? Because now I'll tell you about whenever I, I was student of the day, or I don't even remember what it was. But we got to do some fun, fun stuff. Like, in the old days, they had chalk on the uh, chalkboards, and it was all dusty, and you had the eraser. I got to take the erasers out to the playground and pound them together and knock all the dust out of it. That tells you what a good boy I was, that I got a reward like that, right? And sometimes they let you go um, first in line at lunch, right? You get to lead the class down the hall. You're the leader. Have you ever been the leader? Yeah, it feels good to be the king, even if it's just for a day. It feels good to be the king. Am I right? Yeah. And, and do all the stuff. Be treated very, very special. But then it just lasts for one day. And then you got to be, you got to take your crown off. And then you have to, have to eat with everybody else. You're not even the first anymore. You don't get to go outside and clean the erasers. You don't get to hand out the papers that the teacher gives you. You're just... And do you know that Jesus knows exactly how that feels? Because he rode into Jerusalem and they had these palm branches and people waved at him and they said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They thought that he was... They were ready to make him king king but then one week later he's a nobody they treat him like a criminal and they nail him to the cross isn't that something you're king one day and a short time later everybody turns on you and they don't love you anymore well I can tell you one thing Jesus Christ God is never going to turn his back on you. He's never going to stop loving you. You are a king every day in his book. Okay? You need to remember that. Every day. And just the same way that, that Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem, that big city back then, we want Jesus to ride into our hearts and to stay there. Okay? Dear Lord, we love you. And we are so thankful that you have ridden into our hearts. You are our king today and every day. And, uh, and we thank you for loving us, even when we're unlovable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Take your palm branches. You can play with them. You know, there's some people know how to fold those up and to make um, a cross out of them. You can... 
find that on a YouTube video, okay? You, you'll have to have mom or even grandma or somebody show you how to get on YouTube. And you can fold those up into the shape of a cross. Try it. You'll like it. All right. If you would, please, um, follow me in this uh, prayer for illumination. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. And uh, Typically, I don't like to say amen after a do something like that. And it, the reason is because I don't want the prayer to end. I want the... I want the the scripture and the sermon and all of that to kind of be an act of prayer. Um, that, that's my thinking. Uh, Linda has been so gracious. She always comes forward and reads for us. We'll be reading from Philippians. I change it up a little bit every now and then, right? Uh, and it's uh, 2 verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, Paul's letter to the uh, Philippians. Well, uh, Palm Sunday is a rather strange and peculiar day. And if you think of strange and peculiar days, you might remember a film clip that I'm probably sure all of you have, have seen. It's November the 22nd, 1963 at Dealey Plaza, uh, in Dallas, Texas, uh, right across from the Book Depository. And there was a parade, a big fancy schmancy parade with limousines, there was uh, the First Lady Jackie, and she had her, her pink um, um, dress on, and she had a matching hat. And uh, I don't know this. I've just heard people say it. The little hat she had is called a pillbox. And uh, JFK, along with uh, Governor Conley and, and his wife, were all in the limo. And the crowds were cheering watched him go down to the street, but every time we watch that, now, um, you see, we know what's going to happen, and so it's hard to watch, and we, you know, if we could, we would, um, we, we know a disaster is going to happen, it's going to be a train wreck, and there's nothing we can do to, to stop it. Now, today, we remember another parade when Jesus comes in to Jerusalem. Now, he has, and his disciples have deliberately staged this elaborate event, and he stirs up the messianic expectation. In other words, that Jesus is going to um, be the king, and he's going to um, take over. And everyone there is, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a, an ancient uh, shout that it actually comes from Psalm 118 and the way that the crowds of Jerusalem would, would greet a king or someone that they were going they wanted to, to become king so they waved their palm branches in an um, expression of nationalistic fervor the same way that you might see people waving the American flag singing God bless America uh, that, that type of thing but uh, like this, like the parade in Dallas, um, we know that disaster was getting ready to happen. And we would like to yell and, and uh, tell Jackie and JFK and, you know, stop, 
right? Turn around, go back. And we want to yell to Jesus, stop, you know, danger, Will Robinson, danger. But, um, and Jesus prayed, Jesus was there and he actually knew what was coming. He knew it. He was there by his own free will. Uh, there, in fact, there was a hint of the, the tragedy that was going to happen. And unlike um, most other people, Jesus did not flinch. He, the, the hint that I'm talking about is that he rode into Jerusalem not on a war horse, not in a chariot, not um, holding a militaristic baton, um, he rides in to Jerusalem on a donkey, of all things. No one had ever done anything like that before. Although, um, Zechariah, in uh, chapter 9, he uh, portrayed this future king that was going to come, foretelling Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And he enter, enters into Jerusalem in utter humility. Utter humility. This is Jesus. He was, he was going to be king, but he was going to be a very different kind of king than what people were expecting. I've, I've hammered this home several times during uh, this Lenten season. Uh, Jesus knew that, but the crowd didn't. And instead, what they were shouting for is a return to a, a kingdom like King David whenever Israel was at the peak of its power and influence in the world, the glory days. Although, um, throughout this week in Jerusalem, uh, Jesus is going to make it clear that he is a different kind of king. He doesn't have an army. He doesn't have weapons. He's not going to use brute force, because I've told you before, force is not love. And yet, he was confrontational. Think about when he went to the temple and turned over all of the tables. Very confrontational. And think of the way that <laughs> he sidestepped all of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, their tricks trying to entrap him. Um, uh, they got a little bit angry when Jesus bested them. And he stirred up quite a bit of controversy, and he was very provocative. You know, uh, can you imagine that? Jesus being provocative. Uh, but he is. Therefore, we can't be surprised when he is betrayed and arrested. And the crowds go from one moment, they're cheering him, and a short time later, they are jeering him. You know, crucify him. This week, we're going to reenact the entire um, passion story, either on, with our various uh, YouTube, Facebook, self-guided, all of that type of stuff. You can participate in all of the, any way that you feel uh, you're able. And during this time, you're going to be, you're going to play the part of the crowd you're going to play the part of the unruly mob because that most reflects our situation of where we're at in the story. Just like them, it often turns out that there are things in life that are, did not turn out the way we wanted. We get a little angry. We get upset. Life's not fair. Um, this isn't the life. This isn't the God. This isn't the church that I signed up for. We get angry. How many of you have had a day like that where it didn't turn out the way you expected? Think about it. You go to work. It's just another day. You're fine as frog hair is the stupid saying I like to say. And then the boss calls you into his office and gives you a pink slip, asks for the keys, 
escorts you to your desk. You're given a paper box to put all your belongings in, and they escort you to the front door, all in front of your coworkers, and you are humiliated. Have you ever been fired? Have you ever just been let go? Well, am I the only one? Well, it's pretty, you know, even if you know you didn't do anything wrong and that you're doing a good job, it's still, it is humbling, let me tell you. It is humbling. Well, um, that was the reaction of the crowd. They thought that, it, that Jesus wasn't what they wanted, and so they, they have a change of heart, and he wasn't, what they ex- he wasn't what they expected. They were angry. It wasn't fair. They wanted payback. They wanted their pound of flesh. And the crowd that cheered on Sunday, they jeer on Friday. They wanted Jesus' blood. And they announced some very terrible words at this time. May his blood be on us and our children. What does that even mean? That comes from Matthew. But you've got to be careful what you ask for, right? If you ask for rain, uh, that's wonderful until the rain doesn't stop and then you have a flood. You ask for sunny skies, that's wonderful too until it doesn't rain and then all of your, you have a drought and your crops dry up. You ask for snow so that you can have a white Christmas. Then comes a blizzard, right? You ask... uh, for, you have a flat tire, and you ask that somebody stop and pick you up, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and finally somebody comes along. And when you take one look at them, you're just like, oh, my goodness. You know, I really want these people helping me out, this person helping me out. Um, so you want to take back your prayers, and you want to run. Now, we think, everybody thinks, that we know what's best. We know right from wrong. Uh, and no one else does. Um, and by golly, if we were God, uh, there would be justice. Am I right? There would be justice. In the, and the biblical tradition is clear about the consequences of being that arrogant. God will not be mocked. It tells us in our scriptures. None of us is going to get out of this alive. But things are even worse than that. When we join with the crowds that are cheering for Jesus' blood, um, we need to realize that this isn't just, just some regular person. This is not just the carpenter's son, but this is the son of God. The creator of the universe. When we yell out, crucify him. We're playing with fire when we say something like that. God will not be mocked. It's a strange, odd, particular day. And it is also very ironic that um, when... We shall crucify him, or may his blood be on us and our children. That is good news. It's ironic, but it's good news. Because Jesus' blood is exactly what we need to be forgiven. Not just us, but the entire world. There's no more wonderful, life-giving thing that can than to be splattered with the blood of Jesus Christ. And today we call um, today a Passion Sunday. And, of course, I I, I do repeat myself, but not all on the same Sunday. (laughs) But uh, there's new people here, and they need to get the full context of what I'm saying. Passion Sunday, in terms of uh, when we talk about Jesus Christ, we're talking about suffering. But guess what? It also means something else. And at the same time, 
that it means uh, passion like as in deep feeling, as in compassion, deep feeling and commitment. So when people speak about being passionately committed about something, that's what we're, we're talking about. So throughout Holy Week, we hear again every year these ancient stories and we see how passionate Christ is about his love for us. God's love for us. And it's a type of love that forgets itself and their own self-interests and gives completely to the person that is loved. <clears throat> this is a love that is so passionate that in the New Testament, in the Greek, when it's translated into Greek, they have to come up with a brand new word, and it is called agape. Anyone that has gone to the walk to Emmaus knows a little something about agape. It is, um, there's other words for love that the Greeks used. There's eros, which is erotic or romantic love. There is uh, philios, which is brotherly love or love between friends and companions. There's even storge, I think. That's how you pronounce that. It's a love that you might have for your favorite food. Oh, I love chocolate, right? But uh, there's only one love that is God love, that is unconditional. Uh, I, I'll share this with you because it just helps me remind me of what agape means. Sloppy agape, right? It's sloppy because... You just pour it out on everybody. Make a big mess. You just love everybody. Unconditional. No restraint. Sloppy agape. God's agape is different than other types of love that we, we talk about. It is, normally when we love someone, it is because they are attractive or because they're nice because they make us feel good. But when you're talking about God's love, God loves you. The way you look or the way you act does not matter nothing. You are loved because God chooses to love you. Rather, it is a person is loved simply because the lover chooses to love it. The beloved becomes lovable because of the love of the lover. That's exactly what it is, how uh, Jesus Christ, uh, God in Christ, empties himself, takes the form of a servant, and immerses himself totally and deeply in this broken world. Christ carries all that is wrong and ugly with this world because he loves us. There um, are those that um, in the crowd that jeered at Jesus. You can't even say, come down from that cross. You can't even save yourself. <laughs> but that's the entire point. The entire point is that Jesus wasn't there to save himself. He was there to save us because he loves us. That is agape love. <clears throat> And then we read in today's scripture to the Philippians. Now his name is exalted above every other name. At his name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And every voice might join in. May his blood be upon us and our children. That is exactly what happens when we we come here. Uh, when you come to the, the baptismal font, when you're dunked in the water, uh, whatever, it is, you are being splattered with God's blood, God's love. Your sins are forgiven. And that is a, you know, I've told the kids that God always loves them. We well, also need to know that your sins are forgiven. Now, you, you can't just keep on doing your sin 
But if you honestly repent and stop, you are forgiven. Paul has one more gift to offer us in this uh, scripture today to the Philippians. It is a new way of living. Christ offers us a new way of living. Christ poured himself out for us, and now we can pour ourselves out out of love for others. Service to the world. Because you've been splattered with the blood of Christ, you can pour yourselves out to others, splattering the whole world with the blood of Christ. And then maybe one day, you, you know it's going to happen. It has been written, it will be fulfilled, that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of God's people say, Amen. All right. I have a benediction written up for you to go along with, with Palm Sunday. I hope you get the implications. The road has been long this entire Lenten season. You have seen much on this journey, but it is not time to quit. We got one more week to go, and it's probably the most treacherous. There is much to be done. Go in peace, dear people of God. Go ready to proclaim with your lives that Jesus Christ, Jesus is Lord and Savior. Go and offer God's love and peace to all. God's people say, go in peace.